Okay then, before I start today's DOSBots X setup guide for a Windows PC, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. That means you'll get notified every time I release a new setup guide and it really helps out my channel too. So we're looking at DOSBox X today and of course this runs MS-DOS games on Windows. Now I covered DOSBox standard a little while ago, probably just over a year ago and I've actually come across something a hell of a lot better. This is DOSBox X and this is pretty much a fork of DOSBox and it's a lot easier to use for people struggling out there. So first of all, we're going to need to download the emulator itself. I'm going to leave the link in my description for this. And we got several different versions just here. Now, the one I'm using just here is Win64, which I'm highlighting right now with my cursor. DOSBOTS X Win64. Now, I've already downloaded this. Now, secondly, we're going to want some games. Now, this is an absolutely free website for your games. And I'm testing out this brand new DOS game just here. This is Anzu Castle Gracula, which is pretty much a Castlevania, Metroidvania style game. Anyways, I've downloaded both of these. Okie dokes. So what we're going to do is open up the Ming W folder, and this is the DOSBox X emulator. Once you download it, you'll find two folders. The folder which works for me is yes, Ming W. This is our emulator, and if we just open up DOSBox X.exe. This is going to open up the emulator and here we go, awesome stuff. Next thing we're going to need to do then is actually extract the games itself. So I downloaded this Castlevania game and it's downloaded into a zip folder. So what I'm going to do with this is create a new folder on my desktop, new folder, and I'm going to call this folder ACG. All I need to do is drag the contents out into that folder I've just created. Okay, so secondly, we're going to need to create a directory to pop our games in. So for this, what I'm going to do is go to C Drive, and within C Drive, I'm going to create a new folder in here. New folder, and I'm going to call this folder DOS. And I'm going to go inside the DOS and drag in my game or games inside of this directory I've just created. Okie doke, so let's open up the emulator again. So if we go to DOSBox X.exe, and from here we can actually turn this into a full screen to make things look a lot nicer. So we can do this by going up to video, and if we go down to toggle full screen, there we go, we're now in full screen. Now, if you want exit full screen in DOSBox X, just hold down F11 and the F button, and that's going to bring us back into window. I'm actually going to go back up to window and just put this back into full screen just to give it the whole DOS experience. So let's actually mount our game first of all. Okay, so the first command I need to type in the DOS box X is mount. And what this is going to do is actually mount that directory we just created in C drive. So I'm going to type in mount followed by C space C. So just copy exactly what I'm doing and you should be fine. Now finally I'm going to type in DOS and press enter and here we go. So we've now got that directory mounted into DOSBox X. Drive C is mounted as local directory. Awesome. Next up I need to enter this directory itself. So I'm just going to type in C and here we go. If I then press enter, Drive C is mounted as local directory. And as you can see, instead of Z or Z, we now got C which is good. We've actually got our C drive mounted rather than Z or Z. And to enter this directory, if I type in DIR followed by enter, here we go. So we are now in that directory I've just created in C drive. And here's my ACG game folder. Okay, so let's actually play this game. So to do this, what I'm going to need to type in is CD. And then I need to type in the name of this folder. So it's ACG. So ACG. I'm then going to press enter. 
Okay, so that's now mounted, and what I'm going to do to access the actual files from this folder is type in DIR, enter. And here we go, this is my contents of this game. Now for this particular game, to start it, I'm looking at using the bat file. So as you can see on screen, we got start bat. So to start up this game then, what I'm going to do is type in start dot bat. And if I press enter, here we go then. So this is the initial setup for this particular game. So it's going to tell us the controls. And remember, DOS games have different startups. Uh, this one in particular is just going to tell us what the buttons are in the game. So uh, we also got the options here to disable sound effects, uh, double buffer on or off. What I'm actually going to do is just type in 99 uh, to exit. And this should launch us into the game itself. So as you can see the game is working perfectly fine and just remember we can actually exit full screen and we're going to do this by holding down the F11 key with F and here we go we're back into window modes. And if that was a little bit confusing, DOSBox X has got a really easy solution of actually loading up your games automatically without the need of typing in any commands. So for this example, I've got Gunmetal. This is a demo version which I've downloaded from the same website. Again, I'm going to create a new folder for this and just call this folder Gun. That'll be fine. Again, I'm going to extract all the contents out of that zip folder and pop them into the Gun folder. And just remember, for easy life, just put all your games in your C drive and back into that DOS folder. So, if we go back to DOSBox X to automatically load your games, it's just a simple case to go into the main tab at the top just here. Quick launch program, and we're going to need to find the actual executable itself of the game. So, from here, we're going to go to C drive, DOS folder, here's my games, gun. And if we scroll down, you'll notice with DOS games that you'll often see several dot executables in bats. For example, uh, the previous game I ran started fine with the dot bat. Now we got a few just here. The one I'm actually going to select is gun.exe. If I just double left click. Ignorant fools. One day, I'll show them all. <laughs> So I truly have no idea what this game is, but it's 3D. Please do not obstruct this unit. Please do not obstruct this unit. 
Okay, so at this point, a lot of people are going to be asking or a question: Does this run with controllers? Yes, it does. Also, does it run Doom? Not Crisis, Doom. Yes, it does. So for this next part, what I'm going to do is show you how to map out an Xbox controller, for example. So what we're going to do first of all is just use the Quick Launcher to boot up Doom. So again, if I go to Main. I'm going to go to quick launch the program and I'm already directed into my Doom folder so I'm going to open it up with Doom.exe. Okay so Doom loads up straight away, cool. If I just disable the sound by going to mute so I can hear myself think. So what we're going to do then is actually map out a controller. Now Doom, as many of you are aware, is traditionally played with mouse and keyboard and to be honest a game like Doom literally is the best way to play it for speedness, everything else. So what we're going to do is look at setting up a controller to use with DOSBox X. It's actually pretty simple to do. If we go up to main, from here we're going to go to mapper editor. If we open this up, we're going to find the keyboards just here. And where my cursor is right here, we also got the mouse section. So left clicker, middle clicker and right clicker. Right now, I got an Xbox controller through Bluetooth and it's working just fine. And in fact, as I twiddle my Xbox controller around, we can see the axis are just being highlighted. So for your traditional games, it's normally in Britain anyway, a case of WASD keys to be used. And so that's gonna be up, down, left and right. So I'm not gonna say this is gonna work for Doom, but majority of games we can actually map out for a controller. So for example, to map out W, which is going to represent to play upwards. If I press W, we're gonna find at the bottom here, input W key. So I'm going to left click on add and I'm going to press up on my controller as we can see Bluetooth LE X input compatible input device. So what this has done is mapped out my up on my D-pad on my controller to act as that W key. So we've already entered that one. The next one I'm going to do is say for example the game asks us to keystroke A in order to turn left. So if I left click on A, go down to add. And now I'm going to press left on my D-pad and as we can see that one's now mapped. Now if I go back to W, we can see that this one's saved. And go back to A, again that's been saved. Next up we're going to press S and go to add, press down on my D-pad, that one's now mapped. And same for D, add, and there we go. So next up we need to map out the controller for firing for Doom. So if I left click on L just there under mouse, as we can see that's now highlighted. I now go down to add, and then I can press a button on my controller. So for this I'm using my left trigger. And say we need to map out the R, uh, which is the right clicker on your mouse, then just go down to add. And I can then do whatever I want to it. Uh, some games might require you to jump, which is space. So we can also map, say, space to jump out with a button on your controller. So anything goes, really. Now, what you need to remember is to save these settings. And also remember that not every DOS game is going to have the same configurations. So, for example, some DOS games might require the arrow keys just there. In which case, you can then map out those keys with your controller. So, sometimes it might take a little bit of getting used to, but you can easily do this like I've just done. So, we save that, and now we can go to exit. Now, if I press my controller, by pressing my right trigger, I've now opened up the menu just here. And by using my D-pad, I'm actually now operating the options. And by using my left trigger, I'm actually now shooting. So yes, it's not perfect, but as you can see, this is where we want it to go to. For those of you out there who want to map out controller, uh, rather than using a keyboard. Now, some DOS games might require a lower or higher speed, depending on the game you want. So if your game's running particularly slow, it's always worth going up to CPU, just clicking on this one, Go down to emulate CPU speed, and from here we'll have different processing speeds. So we've got Pentium just here, AMD, Pentium 3, and we got things like AMD Athlon. So all of these just here are going to represent different speeds for your games. If we go to the video tab, we can change aspect ratio just here. We can go down to scalar and add a bit of effects to the game that we're playing. If we go to VSync, we can turn VSync on or off to match your screen. 
Overscan, we got some overscan options just here. Now, I've not said yet, but DOSBox X actually emulates NEC PC98. I'm not going to show you a setup for this, but it does have the capability of running NEC PC98 games, which is pretty cool and a nice little feature to add. Now, for those out there who fancy playing a very long game and say it doesn't have a save and load option, you can actually use save and load states. If we go to capture, we go down to save state, just left click on this one and we can give this save a name. So I'm going to type out Doom and if I then press OK, if I move my character around in my game, I go back to capture, go down to load state. And here we go, we have now just loaded back where I've just saved it from. So that's a really easy way of loading games back up. Okay, something I've not mentioned yet is we can actually reset DOSBox. Just like you're turning on and off or resetting an IBM PC. To do this, all we need to do is go to main, reset virtual machine. And here we go, we're now back into DOS. And that's it then for today's DOSBox X Windows PC setup guide. So hopefully I've covered everything in there which uh, people might want to know about, such as the very easiest way of getting up and running with DOS games and also mapping out controllers. So anyways, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content here on my channel, just Jamie. Also feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.